She's had more shoes than Imelda Marcos. Try a billion on for size. In 35 years, she hasn't aged a day or gained a pound. And she's had at least 50 careers. The perfect woman? Her fans think so. Last year, more than a million Barbie dolls were sold each week. For the woman who conceived Barbie, life hasn't been quite so perfect. But Ruth Handler is as much a survivor as the doll even big girls won't give up. The stakes are high. No running? Okay, I'm sorry. For Tammy Gary and 1,500 other anxious collectors here in Orlando at the annual Barbie Festival, they have one goal, to buy rare Barbie dolls. Oh, she is beautiful. No, she is beautiful. Who is responsible for this madness? This is just the ultimate for us having you here. This woman. Ruth, you are my hero. Ruth Handler, founder of Mattel Toys and creator of the most popular doll in the world. OK, we're going in. This is Handler's first visit ever to the annual pilgrimage of Barbie collectors. And it's their first chance to buy Handler's new autobiography, Dream Doll. To whom? Believe it or not, for Barbie fanatics, Ruth Handler is almost a holy woman. I'm so happy to meet you. Yeah. Oh, please, you don't have don't to cry. cry. They really are carried away by how important Barbie is to them. Barbie is the most important thing in their life. So important that last year, sales were over $1 billion. That's billion, as in Barbie. Every single second, there are two Barbie dolls sold from Bloomingdale's to Bangkok. At the start of Handler's career, her priority was not raising Barbie. I don't know what was driving me, but I needed to prove myself from the day I was born. She was born in Denver in 1916. And get this, she didn't play with dolls. Handler preferred working in her sister's store. She met her husband, Elliot, an artist and designer, at 16. They married five years later, moved to California, and started a business making dollhouse furniture, with Ruth out there selling, at a time when most women stayed home. How would you describe yourself? Gutsy. I always kind of considered myself a fluke, because there were no others like me. <laughs> I loved my children, but I wasn't suited to taking care of a home. Handler knew what suited her was running a business. Her small company grew to become a giant, Mattel Toys. I was in a sea of men. Did the men in your company uh, give you a hard time? They, they either liked me or they had to go. My Barbie doll is really real. And there were things the men definitely didn't like. Say, Ruth's idea for not just another baby doll, but an all-grown-up doll. Barbie with very grown-up features. They didn't think that a doll with breasts was uh, exactly appropriate. Why was it important to you that this doll have breasts? The whole idea was that a little girl could uh, dream dreams of growing up, and every grown-up that she uh, saw had breasts. One little girl who did not like Barbie was Ruth's own daughter, Barbara. Yes, Mom named the doll after her, and Barbara was mortified. She got quite embarrassed by the whole thing. What did your children think of the fact that you were a working mother and worked very hard? I think Barbara resented it very much through the years because all her friends' parents were available. And uh, she used to ask me why, uh, why I had to be different than everybody else, and that really hurt me. Soon. Her son, Ken, was not too happy either. In 1961, Handler introduced the doll with his name. The Ken doll, when it came out two years later, had no bulge in the appropriate place, and uh, the kids teased him. Get both Barbie and Ken. Barbie and Ken's early years were carefree, but then came the rise of feminism, and Barbie became an enemy. The attacks have never stopped. I think the main criticism of Barbie is no woman can ever look like Barbie anatomically. That young girls will eventually be dissatisfied with their own bodies. Many women have a problem with their own bodies as they grow older. I cannot uh, believe that the doll causes that. In the beginning, Barbie just seemed to be consumed with what she was wearing, just clothes. Connie, the whole concept of Barbie was that her clothing would 
permit the child to pretend they were in a certain kind of activity. The image you were projecting was someone who could play tennis and yeah. go to a prom yes. and, yes. and be a nurse, not yes. a doctor. I never dreamed of trying to change the world. I wanted to show the world as it is. And at that time, there were no women doctors. I think Barbie actually was a kind of a pioneer in a positive way when she first came out. M.G. Lord was so consumed by the Barbie phenomenon that she studied the doll for three years. The result, her soon-to-be-published book, Forever Barbie. What do you think Barbie represents? She was a rebel. Barbie was independent. Barbie didn't define herself by relationships of responsibility to men or to her family. Barbie pointed the way out of the kitchen. No brunettes. Can you believe that? Today, little girls in America own an average of eight Barbie dolls. Older women, and men, too, collect hundreds, even thousands of Barbies. There you are, my dear. When Ruth Handler signs a doll, its value increases. Hi, to Tammy, T-A-M-I, please. And even Bob Mackey is here. The famous fashion designer dresses Carol Burnett, Cher, and, of course, Barbie. I just am so glad to be here. This is why I came. Just how much are true believers willing to spend? You bought it $17,000. Buyer number $395. $395. That was a bunch of money. That was a lot of money. A bunch of money is just what Barbie and other popular Mattel toys made for the handlers. They were worth a few hundred million dollars. Life was good, but the dollhouse was about to collapse. Things got very bad at Mattel. Mattel suffered big losses in the early 1970s. Federal investigators began looking into the company's books. Handler walked out in 1975. Three years later, she and four other executives were indicted by a federal grand jury for allegedly falsifying earnings and sales records. Did you do anything illegal? No, I never did anything illegal. There were illegal acts performed in our organization. My error was not ferreting them out and firing the people immediately. Not according to the government. A judge sentenced her to five years of community service and perhaps to a lifetime of doubt about her remarkable accomplishments. Do you think today that you have proved yourself? That's a hard question to answer. I, I guess so. I get the feeling that you cannot declare success. Well, uh, I've had a lot of uh, bad things happen. And so, uh, you got me. Can you stop this for a minute? I don't know what happened to me. This is a woman who does not cry easily. The problem with me is the extremes are so great. The heights are so high and the depths are so low. And there have been more lows in recent years. In June, her son Ken died of a brain disease at age 50. And for 25 years, Ruth Handler has been fighting breast cancer. You obviously realize the irony of creating Barbie and insisting that she have breasts. Yes. And the fact that uh, you have the loss of your own. Yeah, it is ironic. Somehow my life has evolved around breasts, purely by accident, I'm sure. Ruth Handler had a mastectomy in 1970. I had been fighting to be um, a respected female executive all my life, and, and when I lost my breast, it was as if I had lost my femininity. <laughs> oh, you came looking for me. Am I late? No, no. Handler got a breast prosthesis, and then, out of adversity, an idea about artificial breasts. They were designed by men, obviously, who didn't have to wear the damn things. And besides that, they didn't match the other side. The two sides just didn't match. Losing a breast is not the end of the world, ladies and gentlemen. The it former businesswoman turned patient, turned back to business to help heal herself and others. Walking around hiding myself for so many years. Handler got together with her doctor and some former Mattel designers. I revolutionized the breast business. Woman by woman, store by store, she created another million-dollar enterprise, the Nearly Me prosthesis. And as always, Handler was nearly perfect when it came to promotion. I want you to feel... Yeah. Suppose they're tuning in right now. 
it still gives me the same mm -hmm. coverage. Yeah. In 1989, Ruth Handler lost her other breast to cancer. Two years later, thinking it was time to finally slow down, she sold Nearly Me. The rest breast. But she still spends a few weeks a year telling women about her breast device because she says it's the work that has meant the most to her. May I slip this in just to see? Sure. She's also discovering something else. Just what it means to be Barbie's mom. You are successful. I know that. I know that. Over and over and over again, people said to me, thank you for making my life better. On one or two occasions, they told me they were nearly me wearers, and that I understood. But, uh, Barbie? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I don't want to put Barbie down. Uh, I am learning that she is far more important than I could have ever myself understood. Ruth and her husband celebrated their 56th anniversary in June, and their daughter Barbara says she's finally gotten over the sibling rivalry she felt for her namesake, Barbie.